Good morning everyone, my name is Luis E. Galasos, and today's topic is going to be something more exciting, something more jubilant, something more alive. In my previous videos, I have talked about and covered topics such as anxiety, depression, mood disorders, industrial psychology, on how business owners try to control their employees, and also how controlling can yield towards owning, ownership using uh, the have mode rather than being in the being mode. Well, today's topic, I am deeply honored to express to you a topic that I deeply love and a topic that I did intensive research on is on love and relationships. Today's going to be really exciting because I want to discuss to you how to find purpose in a relationship, how to communicate with your husband, your wife, boyfriend, or girlfriend. Um, as you can see here, I did a pretty intense, th thorough research on love, intimacy, relationships, passion, uh, the controlling on how it needs to be separated. So here's my work that I did on love and relationships. So to continue on, I will be talking about love and its attitudes and its emotions. What is love, one may ask? Well, love is an essential attitude that targets countless individuals around the globe every day. Love is a universal language. Love is expressed in many ways. Verbally, it's by saying, I love you, sweetheart. Uh, through nonverbal communication, by, by doing this without even saying words, just by doing this, or by, by this also. Another is through expressiveness, by giving flowers, being enchanted by beauty, by that urge of love, that promising urge that just binds and suffocates one another through that primal urge of love. Love is like a seizure, it will strike you instantly in that moment, it will paralyze you without even thinking, whoa, what am I now? What, who am I? What am I doing now? So those are the topics I covered in my research, uh, the attitudes of love, emotions, its cognition, uh, the brain, and, and, how, and how we find purpose in love. So in this world, we kind of find problems where couples are bitter men, they keep fighting, Josh, it's all your fault, Mary, why are you talking to those guys over there? When in doubt, those are Mary's best friends, but what, ca what causes those, those urges of being jealous, being possessive, like, I own you type of thing? So in this topic, I want to cover the context of language on love, which is what I covered in my research. Step number one. The, the language of love. The language of love is how we communicate with one another. For instance, in my previous example, I used Catherine. I'll use Catherine again only because it's a simple example for me. So, uh, let's say Catherine and I met at a church or I was shopping at the mall and boom, I fell head over heels over her. What do we say usually? Oh my goodness, that was love at first sight. I think I'm falling in love with her. I think I'm falling in love with him. Most girls and guys say that equally. Why do we say I'm falling in love? Why do we say love at first sight? The sight of what? Love is an alienated goddess. This, what, we don't see love. So therefore, we are paralyzed through the thoughts of the sight of unknown. What is the sight? When we say love at first sight, it's paradoxically in, intentionally meant for I'm falling in love, therefore I will be paralyzed through that image. The, the image of what is what you have to ask. What is the image? The image of the cameos of the art of life or the cameos of the art of the self-portrait of yourself in which you're falling in love? Are you falling in love because it represents something from your past? Or are you falling in love because you want to give yourself wholly to the alienated goddess of love? 
So that's where you have to pause for a moment and ask yourself, who am I falling in love? Am I falling in love for the sake for myself? Or am I falling in love with the alienated, with the alienated goddess in which I will succumb myself to? That's what I did in my research. I postulated those questions because I pondered to my mind, well, gee whiz, what is love? And I pondered many times, and I asked my professors, and I did intensive research. I, I read numerous ar articles on the database, and I was wondering myself, why do we say love at first sight? Why do we say falling in love? When in doubt, falling in love is very abstract. Falling in love is giving yourself holy. When in doubt, you're not even in love yet. That's the trick, people. You need to transform yourself and change the language and say, I'm being in love. Never say, I'm falling. Because when you say, I'm falling, I don't mean that you're going to fall to the floor, but you're falling head over heels, which makes the emotions more magnified. You're magnifying more emotions. You're polarizing more thoughts into, into your cognition. So you don't want to polarize extra emotions, which weren't even there in the first place. So in order to to be able to know yourself, you need to ask yourself this question. Is love an art or is love the beauty of the campus of the self-portrait? So that is the key question you may ask that you have to ask yourself. That's the question I ask myself and that's where my th research went thorough. The second is imago. Imago are the traits that we have learned and picked up from our relationships with our parents, uh, which is learned behavior, which is the stimuli, the environment, everything we see from our mom, from our dad. So let's say Susie is, hmm, let's say she's eight years old, and her father has always been destructive, alcoholic smokes cigarettes, um, comes home abusing his wife. Her dad berates her, tells her, you're not worthy, you're just like your damn mom. You're just, you're just disgusting, you're ugly just like your mom. Why did he even marry your mom? Those destructive words can harm a child's psyche right here mentally and, and physically because what if the dad abuses her? So. As she grows older, let's say she's 21, 22, around there. Let's say she's 22. So now she's dating this guy named John. John so happens to be suffering substance abuse disorder. He's been suffering alcoholism for four months. He smokes crack, he smokes cigarettes, he does cocaine, and he abuses girls by punching them, scolding them, grabbing them. But there's, for some reason, she likes him. And why is that? That is the imago, and that is what she's comfortable with from her childhood. Therefore, she's resorting those emotions through the present relationship with John. To her, that's her comfort zone. To her, that's what she's always been used to. Therefore, her metacognition subconsciously that's what she loves, that's what she's attracted to. So if John abuses her, tells her, you're not worthy for me, why even? Why did I even date you? She, I'm not saying she might like it, but she'll take it. She'll take all the verbal abuse. She will stick with him by his side. And why does that happen? Well, that's the imago, people. Imago are the traits we have picked up from our parents. Think of it as a video, video recorder. Imagine our brain is video recording everything. It's televising, every, it's channeling, it's going like this. It's slowly, it's picking up all the external stimuli and it's recording subconsciously. So when we sleep, our delta waves are being programmed, channeling all the emotions, all the experiences we have experienced in our childhood. And that, my friend, is how we always get what we want with our boyfriend or girlfriend. And that's why 
many people would ask me, Luis, why am I attracting the same person over and over and over again? Why are they the same like my previous ex-boyfriend? Why are they the same like my previous ex-girlfriend? Why can I not break this bondage? And I always tell my friends, because it is your imago. I always ask them, tell me your childhood. And I make them aware of their childhood. And once they tell me their childhood, there's a binding connection that crosses the bridge into the present relationship. There's a cure for that. The cure for that is becoming aware of your own emotions. Why, why are you so hostile? More than often not, when a person is hostile, that is because they want to have control in the present moment. They never had control in their childhood when their father would beat them up, when the father did drugs, they couldn't control that. I mean, they were six or eight years old. Nobody can control that, that's uncontrollable. So when they're 18 or 20 years old, they're gonna become more dominant, they're gonna become more controlling, they're gonna become more bossy, they're gonna to wanna to control their boyfriend that, or, or boyfriend, girlfriend, or whoever. And that yields towards the child from within. The child from within is what I expressed as the expressive character. P, A, C. P, parent, A, adult, C, child. When the person is 22 years old, they're carrying on the child from within. That child from within is toxic into the relationship when you're grown up as an adult. As an adult, Love is being poisoned by the child from within. Everybody has a child from within. And in order to come in peace with that, you need to become aware of the bypassers within your mind. The bypassers are those negative thoughts that are triggering. You're not beautiful, you're not worthy, you're not handsome, you're ugly. Those are the bystanders that are keeping you from the things you want in life. You need to get rid of those toxins, go back into your childhood, go back into your childhood, go back into the dream, close your eyes, go back into the dream, take a deep breath, hold it in, exhale slowly, and now for a moment, you go back into your childhood, you see all the surroundings from the wall, you see all the colors, try to smell everything, now, as an adult, I want you to verbally talk to your child, which is you, to heal those wounds. Tell that child, which is you, as a grown-up, I am sorry I was never there for you. I am sorry that I was little and I couldn't control you. I am sorry that I wasn't there to help you with your father. Notice that paradoxical, shape-shifting, mirror experience. Let's say I'm grown right now. I'm grown. I'm here dreaming already of my childhood. I'm here th seeing everything that happened in my childhood. Now I will talk to Luis, which is me, but I will subconsciously see myself as a little baby, five years old, six years old. I will talk to him and tell him I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. I'm sorry that I, could, that I couldn't protect you, but now, now that I'm grown up, I'm here to protect you and I'm here to say I'm sorry, and I'm here to say I come in peace with you. And that is how you come in terms of concluding, of, of your own conclusion, of self-closure, of the child from within. And once you come into terms with your closureness of your child from within, it's gone. You will never have resentment, jealousy, you will never have bitterment, you will never feel uh, bossy controlling because once you come in peace with that child from within you'll you'll start to attract something different you'll start to attract whatever person you've had in your ideal picture and you'll start to attract that lover that you've always wanted that handsome young man that ha beautiful young woman that you've always wanted in your life that's what keeps us from getting the things we want from our relationships is the child from within we all have a little uh, wound from our childhood. It worked for me. I had a little minor wound in my childhood and I kept 
attracting the same woman and I was wondering to myself why am I keep attracting that same pattern well I used that technique and it worked wonders and from there I broke my own bondage and I included in my research I included some diagrams um, as you can see I will show you some some bar graphs that I did to show that my research was valid and on gender the sexes the independent variables using chi-square testing and my research was valid I'm happy to say and once you come into terms of closure with your childhood you'll start to change your metacognition your subconscious mind you'll start to attract a new different aura you start to attract that lover that you've always wanted and I'm so happy to share this with you because I know there's many of you out there in the world that are wondering why am I attracting the same person I'm tired of it well that's because of your mago whatever you're used to in your childhood that's what you'll be attracting in your present moment so use that technique close your eyes like I said take a deep breath exhale Inhale, exhale, one more time, inhale, exhale. Now you go back into your childhood, go back into your home, go back into the walls, smell everything from your childhood where you were raised. Find that child which is you and talk to him get get on your knees get just just go something like this go something like this and talk to them like this tell them I'm sorry I wasn't there for you give them a hug give them a kiss on the cheek which is you as a little as a little baby give them that promising love and therefore that child from within will be closed no more emotions you'll start to attract a different a different relationship with yourself, more compassion with yourself, more love towards yourself, and that ideal lover that you've always wanted in your life. And that's the art of love. You're supposed to enjoy the dance of love, the dance of life. And another important research that I did is two terms that I coined in my research, which I've noticed when I did intensive research, was Productive expression, per, the productive character, and the expressive character. The productive character is the lover who's being in love. Remember, we should not fall in love. We need to be in love. When the person is being in love, that person expresses the, the productive character. What is the productive character? The productive character is the person that gives a life a life spirits to that to his uh, boyfriend or girlfriend the productive character stands in love that stands out of love standing in love is standing side by side with your lover giving character giving strength giving wisdom giving a life traits giving hopes and dreams to your lover the expressive character that we see nowadays is either the guy or the girl dressing very sexy very um, expressive with how they wear their how they wear their skirts how the guy sh expresses themselves how the girls present themselves by putting so much makeup lip gloss lipstick doing their hair uh, getting ready for the nightlife that is the expressive character and they think by that is what will get them having the long-term relationship and I'm sorry to say, but that is not the way to, f to stand in love. The expressive character is what I've noticed, and it's common uh, around the country. When I did my research, it was noted on, on my research that the expressive character only down spirals to controlling, jealousy, wanting to express love through emotions. And what I mean by emotions, by love it, love it for sight, one night stands, 
having sex on the first night, and then bam, jealousy. Why hasn't he, why hasn't he called me? Why has she, she called me? Notice how everything is just going down spiral, knowing that that person is falling in love, supposedly. But once you're being in love and standing in love, you're giving birth to an angel. You're giving birth to life. You're giving birth to that lover that you've always wanted. You're creating your ideal self-portrait. You're supposed to paint the canvas life of art of your, of your lover. When you're standing in love, you're not only standing, you're by yourself, but you're standing with love. You're dancing the waltz of love. You're standing together as one, united in a union of love. You're giving compassion towards one another. You're receiving one another. You're giving birth to one another. And not only are you giving birth to one another, but you are acknowledging one another through each other's presence, not through hormones, not through the looks, not through the sexiness, not through the handsomeness, but through the symbolic union of love, by standing in love, by being in love, not falling in love, not standing out in love. Because when you stand out in love, you're standing out to the human race of the crowd and saying, guys, look at me, I'm sexy, I'm wearing my short skirt, I'm wearing this, or guys, look at me, I'm wearing my most expensive suit, I'm wearing my most expensive scarf. That is not the way. The way is through the productive characterness on how we express ourselves in love. And lastly, is communication skills on love. Re remember when I talked about the imaginary chalk? Well, I, fit, I actually want you to get a chalk or a marker, and this tip really works amazingly. You will see fine results. If you're having re relationship problems, communication problems, um, jealousy problems because no marriage, no relationship is perfect. So if you're having problems, I have a solution for you and it's worked tremendously as I've noted on my research. Get an imaginary chalk or a marker or even a hula hoop if you can. But since I don't have a hula hoop here with me, um, I'll just pretend I have a chalk. So here's my chalk or a marker and actually physically Draw it out. Draw it out around you or get a hula hoop. Go inside the relationship. Go inside the hula hoop. Hold each other's hands. Let's say this is my hula hoop. Hold each other's hands. Look into each other's eyes and say, Darling, sweetheart, or baby, I acknowledge on how I feel. I acknowledge on what has been going on with us. Notice what I'm saying. I am. I acknowledge. I'm not saying it is your fault. You need to hold each other's hands, look into each other's eyes, inside the inner circle of the hula hoop. Hold each other's hands and say, I am not happy on how I'm feeling right now. And the way I'm feeling is you've been ignoring my texts. You've been ignoring my phone calls, sweetheart. Never say, you have been blowing me off. It is all your fault. Never say that. That is, that is the first step when you're in a hula hoop. And second, the husband can do the same thing or boyfriend can do the same thing. He needs to look into the girlfriend's eye and say the same thing. Same as for the girl with a guy and the guy with the girl. And also, once you're in that circle, get a pen and have that person speak only when spoken. When the person is speaking, you need to be silent. Listen. The art to love, to love is to listen. When you're listening, you're listening on how the person feels. <coughs> Excuse me. You're getting inside their quality world. You're getting inside on how they think, how they feel. Listening, ladies and gentlemen, is a beautiful art because not only are you listening to them verbally, but you're listening 
to their inner soul. You're, you're getting a glimpse on what they're feeling inside. And that, people, is a beautiful thing to ever experience when you're listening. When the person is saying, I feel I've been alienated. I feel I haven't been getting proper attention. You start to communicate more effectively and then you begin to feel what they're feeling. And then from there, you start to acknowledge each other's feelings and then you come into terms to a solution. From there, you can say, I will start to do this, but you actually have to write it down on paper. So you guys can make like a little binding contract. Make it fun, make it, make it, uh, make it spunky, make it funky, make it, make it so rad where it's so fun and you know, you guys are sharing each other's life. So write it down on paper, write down, these are the things that I will start to do and these are the, these are the things I will not do anymore. That way when you're writing it, you're actually seeing it and you're actually writing it and when you write it it's going mentally into your subconscious mind so when you write it it will be like a binding contract you actually sign it have your boyfriend girlfriend sign it and once you sign it that is your contract and when and once you sign the contract then you can't get out of the hula hoop circle but let's say the person is being stubborn and the person doesn't want to sign it well if the person is being stubborn, that person can say, Sweetheart, I'm not ready to sign the contract yet because I still feel emotionally angry. I still feel bitter men towards you. But tomorrow, I will go inside the inner circle again with you and I will sign in with you, but not right now. And then end it. We don't want to protrude more blood into the relationship. We don't want to protrude more wounds into the inner soul. So that is the way to do it. You say, baby, darling, sweetheart, whatever you, you call your love, or baby cake, whatever you may say. There's so many beautiful puppy names out there. So whatever you call your lover, tell them, sweetheart, I'm not feeling good right now because I still feel angry on how you've abandoned our relationship. So I'm gonna step out out of the inner circle. I will not sign a contract, but I will sign it tomorrow with you and we'll go together inside the hula hoop and I will sign it. And that will resolve all the negativity from the, re from the relationships between each other. And that has worked tremendously. And that is one tip I've been wanting to share with you and I'm so excited I put it out there so you can follow the tips and I know it's gonna help you successfully, tremendously awesome. And to end, on attitudes of love and emotion I want to conclude by saying always acknowledge their presence always give them compliments give them flowers if they've been doing good deeds to you even the simple things they throw out the trash just tell them thank you sweetheart I acknowledge what you did on your on your good deeds I acknowledge you give them a kiss in the cheek Give them a kiss on the lips, wherever you want. If, if they brought you lunch to work, return them the gift also as well. This is where the misconception happens. When they, get, when they do good deeds, the husband right away thinks, sex, I'm going to give them sex. No, even same for girls. Girls think that tonight I'll give them sex and dress all sexy. Yes, that's fine. I'm not saying that's wrong, but never go with the intent of hormones or sex. Return a good deed by saying, thank you baby, tomorrow I will take you out to dinner for the good deeds you've done to me at work. You brought me lunch to work, you cleaned my office, you cleaned my shelf, so tomorrow I'm gonna take you out on a date, or I'm gonna take you out uh, traveling next month. I'm gonna book us a flight, just us private in a private resort, something. It could be something simple. You guys can go to a pizza parlor. Uh, the husband can get creative. He can ask the chef, oh, well, draw the shape uh, of a heart on the pizza. Have a pizza and wine night, everyone. Think creative. Think expressively. Love is so beautiful. Love is so kind. Always love love. Never be cold with each other. Use the inner circle. Do everything you can to save your relationship. In order to save your relationship, always say, I'm being in love. 
I am standing in love. I am not standing out. I am not falling in love. Never use that language. Love is so kind. Acknowledge each other's presence. Select the things you want in life. Think of it as a banquet. Think of it as a uh, all-you-can-eat buffet. When you go in inside an all-you-can-eat buffet, what do you do normally? You see all the foods. You select the things you like in life. You select anything you want. Same goes for love. Be careful what you pick. Be specific what you want. If you want a good relationship, write it down. If you want good, communi good communication skills, write it down. If you want your lover to be lovable with you, write it down. Write it down so it can happen subconsciously later in life. When you write it down, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. You want this, you want this, you want this, you want this, and this. And that is your main entree. Your main entree will turn into the statue of love, which is the liberty that will set you free from all the binding, negativity, bondage that you have suffered from your childhood. So I will leave you with that. I hope you enjoyed this segment on attitudes of love and emotions. I was so thrilled to share with you my research. And... On the next series, it will be a surprise. I will not uh, give away any details, but I hope you stick with me. I hope you gain more wisdom on love. And always remember, immature love says, I need you because I love you. Mature love says, I love you because I need you. Thank you for this wonderful time. I hope you learned a lot. And I will see you next time. Good night, everybody.